is an afterlife? Probably. You have to think about it much. Um, somewhat, I guess. Are you afraid of dying? Not really. Have you ever lost a loved one? Yes, I have. Doesn't that make you think and wonder about what's the purpose of existence if we all die? I mean, everything dies. We lose our puppy, we lose our grandma, grandpa, mum and dad. Do you ever think about that, the futility of life? I mean, I do, and I really hope there's an afterlife, and I kind of tell myself there is when I lose someone, but I can't really be sure. Peggy, do you think there's an afterlife? Yes, I do. Now, why are you so adamant? Why are you so sure? Well, I grew up Catholic, but now I'm in the church, and I've read the Bible, and I just believe everything it says. Have you been born again? Not really. I've just been baptized. Do you know what born again means? Have you ever heard that? I've heard it, but it, I don't know what it means. Well, it's from John chapter 3. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you're not going to enter heaven. So it's vital that you're born again. He said three times in, a, in as many verses, he said, marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. Do you believe in God's existence? I do. You do. So what does God say about death and what causes it? Any idea? Um, no, I'm not sure. I haven't had a born again special moment. Okay, well, let's see if we can make one of those moments, okay, with God's help. So let's just have a little test to see if you're a good person. How many lies have you told in your life? Definitely more than I could count. Okay. You think you're a good person? Yes. How many lies have you told in your whole life? I don't know. <laughs> Quite a few? White lies. Yeah. What color are they? They're white lies. Now, why, are they, why are they white? Because they're not going to hurt anybody. Someone once said, uh, taking the easy path is what makes men and rivers crooked. You know, it's easier to tell a, a lie than speak the truth. And often, a lie is a lie, even if it doesn't hurt anyone. Um, God have you... says, I, follow me and I will make your path straight. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Where's that? Well, from here till I get to heaven. See, it's straight, but sometimes he puts boulders in front of me, and sometimes he puts rocks in front of me, and you just have to climb over or keep going. Am I a boulder? No, you're fun. Okay. Now, have you ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small? No. Okay. Have you ever used God's name in vain? No. Now, Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? I guess so. <laughs> no, I've been married almost 50 years, and the only one I've looked at with lust is the one I'm married to. <laughs> and you didn't. This is my dilemma with you, and I'm going to put you into a little dilemma. Can you handle that? Yes. You said you're a good person? Yes. In Mark 10, verse 17 and 18, Jesus said, There is none good but God. Who's lying, you or Jesus? Well, Jesus never lies. Good, in the dictionary, number one, there's 40 different definitions, is moral excellence. And when God says I good, yeah, none, I don't of have that. <laughs> none of us are that good. And that's the standard we're called to reach, and we can't reach it. So that's why we need to repent and trust the Savior. Jesus said, I give you new commandments that you love me with my heart, uh, with your heart, soul, and body, and that you love your neighbor as yourself. Now that one sometimes is really hard for me, to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. <laughs> the video will continue in a few seconds, but I wanted to remind you to please subscribe to our channel and click on the notifications bell. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you. You almost got that right. He says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. But when he spoke of that one you mentioned, he said, the whole law is summed up in this, that you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then he gave the story of what we call the Good Samaritan, right. who wasn't good at all. He just did that which was right towards his neighbor. And we all fall short of that standard. And when we realize that, if we die in our sins, we're heading for hell. The best of us are heading for hell if we die in our sins. That's why we need to repent and trust in Jesus. Honor, I'm not judging you, but by your own admission, you're a liar, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments, we looked at four, on Judgment Day, will you be innocent or guilty? Guilty, I guess. You don't have to guess. You'll be like the rest of us. You'll be guilty. <laughs> guilty. Guilty as sin. Would you go to heaven or hell? Well... I'm pretty sure that the whole point of the Jesus thing was that our sins are forgiven, that we get to go to heaven. Explain the Jesus thing to me. I can't say I'm well enough first in it to do that. I wasn't raised in the church. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can explain it to you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. The Ten Commandments. We broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. 
That's what happened on the cross. Just before he died, he said, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. If you're in court, even though you're guilty, if someone pays you a fine, the judge can legally let you go. You can say, Hannah's guilty, but someone's paid a fine. She's out of here. And you can do that which is just and right and legal. Well, because of what Jesus did on the cross, God can legally let you live. He can commute your death sentence, dismiss your case, and grant you everlasting life as a free gift because of the death and the resurrection of the Savior. What you have to do in response is repent of your sins and trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. You know, if you're on a plane and you said, uh, I'm going to have to jump, but I'm not too concerned, I'd say you should be because you're going to go squish on the ground if you jump 10,000 feet. And I say, here's a parachute. And you say, oh yeah, that parachute thing, I don't really know what it does. One of the best things I could ever do for you is hang you out the plane by your ankles for two seconds. And you'd say, hey, give me that parachute. What I've tried to do with you today is hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a little minute and say, this is what's going to happen after you die. You're going to stand before a holy and perfectly righteous God. And you've got a multitude of sins like the rest of us and you need a savior. And so I'm trusting your good sense will kick in today. You'll let fear do its duty like you would with a putting on a parachute. Got to jump. That's terrifying. Give me the parachute. Got to pass through eternity and face a holy God. Give me a savior. Let me trust in Jesus. Does this make sense? Yeah, it does. When you truly do that, you see sin in its true light, find a place of godly sorrow and stop saying, I'm a good person, say, no, I deserve hell. That's when we'll be born again. And God gives us a new heart with new desires, so we love righteousness. I'm not sure I can say I deserve hell. Well, <laughs> each of us do. Maybe purgatory from my Catholic background. <laughs> There's no purgatory. Let me tell you this. The Bible says lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. This may help you understand how serious sin is in God's sight. Do you know what death is called in the Bible? No. It's called wages. The, the, wages. Yeah, the wages of sin. Yeah. And yeah. it's like we're being given the death sentence by God. We're being given wages. We're being given capital punishment. Like a, a good judge will give a, a multiple murderer the death sentence. He said, you've earned this. You've deserved it. These are your wages. You're going to, you're going to be executed. And we are so sinful. We're so self-righteous, so caught up in our own uh, standard of righteousness. We think we're good when we're not. The Bible says lying lips are an abomination of the Lord, no matter what color the lie is. Thieves are not in here at the kingdom of God. When we hate someone, we commit murder. That's what the Bible says. Did you know that? If you hate someone, you're a murderer. It's in no, their person. Yeah, that. it says that he who hates his brother is a murderer. If we lust, we commit adultery. Every one of us has a multitude of sins. The best of us, and the well, scriptures, yeah, yeah we're That's enemies. called free will. We're enemies of God in our mind through wicked works, and every time we sin, we store up His wrath. So that's why we need to trust in Jesus, minute by minute, day by day. When did you last read your Bible? So last Sunday. You did? Mm -hmm. What's today? Now I'm on vacation. I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> and so can I encourage you to get before the Lord, say, Dear God, I didn't realize how serious sin is, and because I realize it's serious today, that lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, that blasphemy demands the death sentence. I didn't realize that. Please forgive me because this is deadly serious and I trust in Jesus. He'll make you brand new on the inside. You'll be born again. You'll pass from death to life and uh, you'll have assurance that you have eternal life because your faith is in Jesus alone. Um, you, you have the testimony, no Bible, no breakfast, no read, no feed. You'll never be the same, Peggy. Put God's word first. We, prayer is talking to God and uh, the Bible is God speaking to us and we need to be slow to speak and swift to hear because you are right. yeah okay Peggy thanks for listening to me you're gonna think further about what we talked about you bet